Howdy y'all, welcome to Caveman Barbecue Outdoors. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make an awesome smoked bone-in prime rib. Couple of different prime ribs you can get. You can get a boneless or a bone-in. This is a bone-in. Uh, definitely prefer the bone-in. You could always cut these guys out and truss them back on if you'd like. Um, I love the bone-ins because whenever I go to slice this to serve it, I like to throw them back on the smoker and do like little ribs. This guy doesn't have a whole bunch of fat uh, on the fat cap, but if, there, if you get one that has a hard layer, definitely want to go in and trim it up. Uh, not too aggressively, you still want some on the outside of the meat. Fat, of course, is flavor and moderation. Next thing I'm going to do, um, you can French these bones if you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and do this completely optional, but there's gonna be a natural seam that comes right along here towards the bottom of the piece of meat. So you just wanna take your knife, just cut into it just a little bit. You wanna roll outward. And we're just gonna clean these bones up a little bit and trim this fat off. We're gonna kinda of French this up, clean up those bones a little bit. Doesn't do much for the cook, it just makes it look nice and pretty. You know, if you're gonna spend good money on a piece of meat, you might as well make it look good too, right? And last but not least, this guy back here. There we go, so as you can see, those bones are looking a lot cleaner. And then what you wanna do is like take a butter knife or whatever you got and scrape these off make it look nice and clean. Again, doesn't do anything for the cook at all. Just a presentation thing. This piece of meat here is primarily fat, so not really edible. Don't want to waste any of the meat, of course. Prime rib, for those of you that buy it a lot, or buy it at all, is not cheap, as I'm sure you guys know. So definitely don't want to waste any of that meat. Got this pretty cleaned up now. It's not perfect again. Doesn't really do anything, just a presentation thing. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is get this guy seasoned up. What I'm gonna go on with is an olive oil binder. Uh, you could do Worcestershire sauce, a lot of people do that. Or you really don't have to do a binder at all. Um, I just like binders. They, they tend to have the seasoning, help the seasoning rather, stick to the meat. And with a big piece of meat like this, um, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to season ahead of time overnight. Uh, I've done prime ribs in the past where I've gone uh, up to 48 hours in the fridge, um, and they've come out great. You get a good dry brine, really good crust on there, but you don't have to. Just, uh, just a recommendation. For this guy, we're just going to season liberally and throw them right on the pit. Okay, first thing I'm gonna go on with, it's just gonna be a kosher salt, of course, of course. And this is a big hunk of meat, guys. Do not be afraid to season it. It's very difficult to over season a prime rib. You don't wanna get too cute with it. The, the star of the show here is the actual rib roast. You know, these guys are expensive. You don't wanna cover up that beefy flavor. But a good season, of course, will help Make it taste pretty good. So all sides. Don't be afraid to get some on the cutting board. That way you can roll it in it whenever you're done. Oops, I forgot this side. I just told you guys to do all sides. I should follow my own advice. Perfect. Next we're gonna go on with a coarse black pepper. So just the typical steak rub. But we're gonna do a couple different things to this guy. We're gonna hit him with some herbs that I typically wouldn't do. And I'm also gonna do uh, garlic butter on the pit alongside of it. That way I can baste as I go. We're gonna throw some herbs in that garlic butter too. First herb is gonna be rosemary. Goes great with prime rib. Probably my favorite herb to put on prime rib. Now, I did say you don't want to you don't want to skimp on the seasoning. However, rosemary is a very strong, so you don't want to overpower it with with rosemary. So just a little bit of rosemary on there. 
Now, we love rosemary here in this household, so I am gonna put quite a bit of it on there. So after the rosemary, we're gonna throw some thyme on there. Last thing we're gonna put on here, just to finish up the season, just a garlic powder. If it wants to come out. This thing will not open. I'm strong. All right, guys, the last thing we're going to put on here is just, uh, just a little bit of garlic powder. Garlic powder goes great with steak, of course. It really goes good with anything. Again, just like everything else, I can't say this enough, all sides. You want to get all those surfaces covered. And again, for the third or fourth time in this video, this is a big piece of meat. Do not be afraid to season it and season it heavily. It also helps to season the board a little bit. And then just roll it in there. Make sure all your sides are covered up. This is where you could truss in this a little bit if you had butcher's twine. Uh, I'm a still use, so I forgot to buy some. So we're gonna throw this guy on as is. I have my old country Brazos outside um, going post oak fire right around 225 degrees. And we're gonna get this guy on the pit. We're gonna go ahead and put this guy on here. Not a great day to be doing this. It is kind of cold, hence the beanie. We're gonna go ahead and put them right here. I want the bones towards the firebox. Um, that way the bones will protect the meat a little bit more. And we get that spinalis where we want it to be. Go ahead and get this shut down and we'll check on it here in about an hour. Got ourselves a nice clean fire burning. If you guys would like a video on fire management on an offset smoker for longer cooks and shorter cooks as well, let me know and I can get super detailed on it. I know there's a lot of videos already out there, but not a whole lot on wood selection and how to cut your wood properly and all that. So if you guys would like that, uh, just drop a comment for me and we can make that happen for you. I'm gonna show you how to make a couple things really quick. I uh, don't think a prime rib is complete without a horseradish sauce, so we're gonna go ahead and knock that out. And I'm also going to go ahead and show you what I'm gonna do for the uh, for my baste. Just gonna do a very simple garlic herb butter. I'm actually gonna knock that out first. So in a Pyrex bowl or cast iron or whatever you got, something that's heat friendly, just grab a stick of butter, cut it in half, like so. I'm going with five cloves of garlic. I'm not gonna mince or slice or anything here. I'm gonna just mash them down a bit and throw them in my, my little bowl here with my butter. Now this is all gonna go on the smoker. Not the, uh, not the horseradish. The um, herb butter here. I'm gonna throw it in a little bit more time. And like I said, we love rosemary in this house, so I'm gonna throw a little bit more rosemary. And this is ready for the smoker. So I'm gonna set this aside. And for my horseradish sauce, pretty simple. Just a few ingredients here. Number one is gonna be, of course, horseradish. I wanna do about a tablespoon of horseradish. Actually, we'll do a tablespoon and a half. I like things that are a little spicy. I'm also gonna do about a third of a cup of sour cream. Just a little bit more. And then I'm also gonna do about an equal part of mayonnaise. And please, for the love of God, use real mayonnaise, not any of that fake stuff. And then to wrap this up, just a squeeze of a lime or a lemon, either one, your preference. And just a little bit of pepper. Give this a quick little mix. Give it a little bit of a try. Mmm. That 
is great. I'm actually going to do just a little bit more, a little bit more lime here. There you go. That simple. This is great for any leftovers that you may have. Um, slice up your, your prime rib, anything that you got left over. Throw some of this stuff on some bread. And you're going to have a pretty good sandwich the next day for lunch. Alrighty, y'all. As you can see, some of that fat peeled back there. That's going to happen every now and again. No big deal. What we're going to go ahead and do is just baste this guy. Now, it is imperative, and I cannot stress this enough. Do not brush. I know, kind of contradicting considering this is a brush but what you want to do is actually take the, your butter and just drip it on there reason for that is if you brush you're gonna completely take that crust off and it's gonna kind of defeat the purpose of getting that crust in the first place that we worked so hard to get I promise you if you do this it'll work out much better for you so you just kind of want to drip that butter all around the edges there you know, this is not a cholesterol friendly meal. That's no problem. I'm not here to teach you guys how to lose weight. I'm here to teach you guys how to cook well. And we're going to come back and do this again in about 10 minutes. We'll be good to go. Alrighty guys, we're to temp right now. We're sitting right around 110 degrees. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just sear this guy off. We're just going to do about a minute maybe 30 seconds on each side. Looking pretty good guys, and like I said, we're not trying to cook him all the way through right now. We're just trying to get that crust set, get a little bit more color on the outside. We're sitting right around 110 degrees internal. I'm thinking with the sear and with this grass, we'll be right around 125, um, which is where we want to be. On a prime rib, for the love of everything holy, you really don't want to go anywhere past the medium rare. Honestly, the rarer the better. This is a really good piece of meat. You don't you really don't want to overcook it. So I'm just gonna sear it on this one last side here. Hopefully without giving myself third degree burns. That's what tongs are for. And then we're gonna cut into them. After a rest, of course. It smells so good. Does it get any better than that, folks? One of the best things in the world you could eat and cook. Alrighty y'all, we gave this thing about a 20 minute rest and we're gonna go ahead and cut into it. So the first thing you wanna do is just cut right along these bones. You wanna get as parallel as possible, almost like filleting a fish. Get those guys cut off. Ooh. Save this for yourself, put that guy back on the smoker. And then cut right down the middle. Let's take a look at this guy. I can already tell you this is a perfect medium rare. But, just to show you. Look at that. It's pretty hard to beat, guys. So, the way you want to serve this, I've seen people slice it really thin. We don't do that here. You want to give them about half an inch thickness slice wise. Now the middle is going to be your most rare. If you have someone in the family that um, isn't quite as um, a fan or isn't quite as much of a fan of medium rare, uh, the outsides are going to be closer to medium. So make sure you grab a slicing knife guys. <laughs> much better. This is just incredible, y'all. I wish you, could, you were here to share this with me. Slide this guy over. And 
And there you go. Hard to beat that, y'all. This is the absolute perfect holiday dish. I mean, I, I can't think of a Christmas dinner without prime rib, and this is, beside brisket, this is probably one of my favorite meals, if not my favorite behind brisket, or honestly, right up there with brisket, y'all. I can't beat this. Make sure you give it a try. So, a couple different things you could do with this. Uh, you can throw it back on the smoker and cook it off just like you'd cook a regular rack of ribs. I like to have options, so I'm actually going to cut this piece off for myself and I'm gonna eat this right off the bone like a savage. And this guy right here is gonna go back on the smoker for lunch tomorrow. We're gonna give this a try with our with our horseradish sauce over here. Doggos eat first, of course. As Brad Robinson would say from Chud's Barbecue, the official taste test. That one didn't even taste it, he just swallowed it. All right, let's give this a try with our horseradish sauce. Mm -mm. My God. I'm so glad there's only two of us eating this because I'm not sharing. That also being said, I'm really glad this is my practice run for Christmas Day. This is so good, y'all. I promise you everyone makes such a big deal about prime ribs. As they should, they're delicious. However, don't let this cook intimidate you. It's actually super easy. Only takes a couple of ingredients. You don't even have to do this in a smoker. If, if you live in a house or an apartment even, and you have an oven at home, you can make this recipe. Granted, it won't be smoked. However, throw this guy in the oven at 225 degrees for two hours and crank it up to 500 at the very end for about 15 minutes, and you can accomplish the exact same thing. Don't let these fancy, big, intimidating pieces of meat intimidate you. I promise you, anyone can do this. Whether you're cooking on a Weber kettle, a pellet smoker, offset smoker, which is my preferred method. This is a really simple, really delicious dish. dish. Um, that being said, y'all, do me a favor, y'all. Please like, share, and subscribe. It really gives us a lot of help. Um, it's awesome seeing your comments down there as well. Um, and of course, if we don't see you guys until after the new year, happy holidays. This is a wonderful time of year. Give your family hugs. Have a great time with them. Enjoy your time off if you got it, and we'll see you all next time.